in, in the beginning of your your teaching, you um, described your vision of therapy. Could you synthesize it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, what it for, takes. Yeah, for a lot of people, I think therapy is fixing problems. But you know, if you have the privilege of being with someone as a therapist, being with someone for one hour, and and you just limit it to fixing problems then you're not giving a good service, you're not helping that person you know, fully. Mm -hmm. And I believe therapy is really about changing lives. It's about giving people a, a rewarding and happy and healthy life. And within that therapy session, you do have the time and the opportunity to do that. Most therapy seems to be based on the problem and fixing it. But in fact, I'm more interested in on the consequences of fixing problems. So. You know, obviously I'll deal with the problem, but most of my work is about the consequences mm -hmm. of having the problem fixed. Because that's, that's the future. Fixing the problem is now. It's what you do next. Where does the person go? Mm -hmm. uh, this way, that way, the direction in life. And so I believe that I, as a therapist have a, and a teacher, I have a duty to help people look far, far beyond just the immediate session. Okay. So for therapy for me is a kind of a teaching, mm -hmm. and teaching is a kind of therapy. And it's about the whole person, about the whole future of that person. Uh, and I always think that, you know, the last thing I want for myself is to look back over my life and regret that I didn't do enough. Because that must be awful to know that you could do more and you didn't. Mm. That would be a terrible thing. And so I want my clients and patients to also feel that they put in 100% and had an amazing life. So I'm kind of focusing almost on that moment, that last moment when they take their last breath, when they look back, instead of regretting, they go, wow, that was an incredible life. So for me, my therapy is about getting them to that point where they can look back and go, wow. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I yeah. Mm. What, what do you feel or think is the core resource to do so? Do you mean for a, yeah. a therapist? Yeah. The heart. Yeah. The head gives you the techniques and the skills, but the intention, the love, the respect, the integrity, the compassion, that doesn't come from here. It comes only from one place here. Which means you have to value other people, even the people you might not like, their client might come in and you might think, I don't want to work with this person, but you've got to put that to one side and see the unique qualities that person has, wherever they're hidden, and bring them out and realize that they have exactly the same right to have an amazing life as you do. And you do everything possible to make that happen. Because that person, regardless of who they are, while they're with you in therapy, is the most important person in your life. So it's the intention. And when you have the intention, what you have is a kind of an energy, a flow, it's actually unconditional love because you know love comes in many forms but unconditional love is that love where you don't expect to get anything back mm -hmm. so in my mind the best kind of therapy is the therapy where the client changes doesn't know how it happened knows that you were an observer of that process but feels that they were responsible for it themselves that way you don't take all the credit you don't say i'm the one with the power i'm using the hypnosis none of that you were just passing through their life and somehow made a difference by your presence. And that for me is a way of doing therapy through unconditional love. What is the specificity for you of hypno hypnosis therapy? How do you mean? I mean, there are many other kinds of th therapy and we mm. all know there is oh. some <coughs> dimension of hyp hypnosis anyway in any kind of mm, rapport. Yes, what is the specificity of, of doing therapy with hypnosis from your well, point of view? Hypnosis uh, in its simplest, simplest form is a kind of adhesive. Mm -hmm. you know, it always has been, you know, in, in its purest form, hypnosis without therapy. Hypnosis is a, a glue or an adhesive. It makes things stick. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever suggestions you give, uh, it makes them more real and more likely to occur uh, through repetition and through trance. So any work you do, regardless of what kind of therapist you are, is going to be much more effective if you use hypnosis with it. Whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy, whether it's NLP, any of, or any of the psychotherapies, 
If you use hypnosis with it, it's going to make your work much more effective. It also gives you access to unconscious information that's not readily available at the conscious level. Because when the client comes in, they will have probably thought about going into therapy for a long time. It's not something you do as you walk down the street and you think, oh, I'll go and see a therapist. No, they, they think about it over time. And when they come in, they kind of have a conscious script which they give you, mm -hmm. which is actually fairly unreliable because if it was correct, they probably wouldn't need to be there. So hypnosis allows you to get deeper than that and get the unconscious information, which is the genuine information about the cause of the problem or the structure of the, of the, of the pattern or, or whatever's maintaining the problem. Because actually maintaining the problem is more important and interesting to look at than the actual cause. Because if the, you know, the cause may be something from a long time ago, it could be quite something insignificant. But they're maintaining it through a process of thoughts, producing feelings, producing thoughts, producing feelings. That is the area you need to work at. And that's where I focus my therapy, on how the client maintains their problem. How would you describe uh, hypnosis, not as a state, but as a, a relational process? Can you, can you be more specific? What does it take? Sorry, I don't understand. What, what does it take in, in a relationship to mm. happen? Oh, okay. Trust. Mm -hmm. That's it, and trust. That's it. Trust, trust, yeah, okay. trust. Once there's trust, then there's a willingness to participate in, in this kind of sharing and this kind of uh, very, very, fairly intimate uh, an, an important exchange of energy. And nothing can happen in therapy without trust. You have to have trust, that's the foundation. So take trust and then you build rapport on that. Now, most people think about building rapport through the NLP techniques, matching and mirroring, but you know, yes. But no, real trust comes from a, a deep understanding that this person really wants to make a difference in your life. That's why I say, that client or patient has to be the most important thing in your life. At that moment, okay, not when you go home, go to bed, but when you're with that, that client at that moment in time in your therapy session, they've got to be the most important person in your life. You come second or third or fourth. They are the most important And person. you would say it's enough to start hypnosis? It's enough to build trust. And then? And then uh, thereafter. Once they realize they can trust you and everything you're working or doing with them is starting to become a reality in the session because of the way you work hypnotically, they really hand themselves over to you. Mm -hmm. and it's not about bullying them, bullying them then and or giving direct authoritarian commands to threaten them into trance. This is about nurturing an incredible relationship, a life transforming relationship. It has to be done very gently. Uh, but once that's in place, wow, you can make an incredible difference to someone else's life. And that's what it's about. You know, I'm very selfish. You know, uh, by that I mean I don't want to have any regrets. Mm. You know, I want to feel that I made a difference. That's how selfish I am. I want to look back on my life and think I made a difference. So all of the skills that we use to build trust, to get information, to induce hypnosis, to do therapy, to send them on their way, all of that is all about my own selfishness of not mm -hmm. wanting to feel I failed or that I could have done better. That's being conscious. Mm. Trusting the unconscious. You know? <laughs> and that's an interesting point because, you know, when you do therapy a lot, you don't have to be there anymore, which is why it's not tiring. And it's because I'm not there. When I do therapy, I'm not there because the unconscious takes over and communicates with the client's unconscious. And that's when the magic happens because we don't get in, in the way and interfere and mess it up with some kind of conscious idea. The unconscious is already working based on experience, of course. Intuition doesn't happen spontaneously, it's a result of experience. Mm. But you don't have to pay attention consciously anymore. You just let go, the metaphors come, the analogies come, the therapy comes. And the structure is determined by your beliefs in how to resolve the source of all human suffering. This brings me to a, a kind of a ritual question because this question is quite old, so one of human suffering. Mm -hmm. How do you envision the development of hypnosis and therapy in the, in the next future? decades? Yeah, because there is a lot ongoing with neurosciences and so on. Hypnosis itself 
has its own career path. It'll carry on as a hypnotherapy practice, but what hypnosis and, hypno and the skills of hypnotherapy have to offer are some incredible observations about behavior and the, and the cause of problems, some incredible ways of resolving those, some incredible ways of making relationships work and building trust and all of the skills. And that is the future of hypnosis, not just in a hypnotherapeutic context, but outside of that, in other therapies, in education, in relationships, in living. Because these skills work. You know, hypnosis has always been effective, but people have been scared of it because of the way the media mm -hmm. ha has, has promoted it. And that's it's sad, but we, we're now realizing that it has so much more to offer than, than what we've seen in, in the media. Uh, and it's been developed as a considerable set of skills and abilities. But importantly, is how you apply those skills and abilities. Come back to the heart again. So I think that this will, this will blossom and it'll spread through all areas of life and society once the next generation or the generation after that have let go of the whole stigma about hypnosis as being a form of manipulation. Which it is. It is, but it's manipulating for the client's benefit, for the patient's benefit, mm -hmm. for the child's benefit. If you're teaching in school and you can use hypnosis to make a difference, okay, it's, it's manipulative, of course. In the same way, a chiropractor will manipulate the body for the client's health. It's manipulative. Actually, everything is manipulative. I agree. Every conversation has manipulation built into it. It depends why you're doing it. Who's it, who's it for? Is it for you? Or is it f to make a difference to the other person? You know, there could be a transformation in the way we communicate with each other. If someone looked at what works in hypnosis, and especially the therapeutic aspect of hypnosis, it's a big world. There's a lot of things that can happen. It's exciting, but we do need to, need to let go of our previous negative perception of it. And that comes down to the media letting go, because that's, that's the organ that, that, contrib that distributes that information. It was really great to have you for three days. Thank you very much I enjoyed for it. this Incredible. few more minutes. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you.